steady now. By 2008, first-person shooters were an incredibly common fixture on Xbox 360, and Frontline's Fuel of War faced seemingly little chance of standing out, especially with the juggernaut Modern Warfare coming out mere months before. However, newcomer Chaos Studios would take inspiration from fellow FPS competitor Battlefield, while creating a story which dips into the real-world dependence on fuel. While it's not an absolute world-beater, its polished shooting and expansive scale make it worthwhile for genre enthusiasts who have exhausted the more well-known shooters. In 2024, a dire shortage of energy and the untimely arrival of a large-scale bird flu outbreak lead to tensions between the West and East parties of the world. Red Star Alliance, made up of Russia and China, engage a surprise assault on the Western coalition to ensure resources are secured, leading to war on a large scale. Frontlines focuses on the Stray Dog Squad, who regularly lead assaults against the Red Star. They are accompanied by a reporter, Wayne Andrews, who film some of the horrors of war they encounter along the way. It's a basic narrative, replete with American gung-ho speeches and cliches, while plot holes leave the narrative feeling secondary to the action. Hey, you all right? Princess, my cover, keep your head down! What are you doing? Hey, are those mini guns still operational? Fuel of War borrows significant elements from Battlefield, mainly in regards to structure. Armed with a bevy of futuristic weaponry, you'll find yourself pushing forward through several key defensive locations, capturing them in order to both drive the Red Star out and set up operation bases to replenish and respawn if you die. In single player, lengthy missions will often be split into two sections, as you push through a war zone. Multiplayer expands this concept further, as you fight to capture bases and push back the opposing team. While the scale is impressive, and the campaign has notable moments, such as a devastating nuke attack that colours the sky a blinding yellow, there's a lack of set pieces to the game, leaving it feeling muted in comparison to the genre's top tier. But the handful of technology at your disposal does keep things interesting. You'll usually be armed with a scoped assault rifle and pistol, but can often find weapons and special armaments along the way. The drones provide a good deal of anarchic fun, allowing you to control miniature vehicles and detonate them when desired, pilot mini helicopters armed with both rockets and assault shots, and even a tread drone which comes with a Gatling gun. You can also control vehicles, often armed to the teeth too. Tanks, armoured vans and helicopters all can be piloted, adding to the scale of the experience and providing a nice break from standard shooting. Missions can often be flexible too, allowing for different approaches depending on your preference. It's clear though that, much like Battlefield, Fuel of War is geared towards multiplayer which is both a boon and a detriment. Maps are often jaw-dropping in size, ranging from a small city block with greater intimacy to the solar array map, which makes vehicle traversal a necessity. Different classes, including anti-armor and sniper, let you find a unique role, and it feels like you're part of a huge battle, creating a sense of satisfaction when you find a role. Sadly, time and the instability of online has taken its toll here. As while well, Xbox Live Play is still accessible, the dedicated servers which up the player count to 50 
are no longer available, which is a shame. Still, even with the more modest 16 players, the chaotic simulation of war is fun with others. Couple more of these and we've got our ticket home. Hell yeah. Don't pack your things yet. You don't get the news I do. Fighting spread to the Korean borders and the South China Seas. Last night, China took Taiwan. Frontlines is not the most distinctive looking game, but benefits from technical polish. While everything suffers from the late 2000s tendency for grey and brown colour palettes, the action runs on a smooth clip and that's even when there's a huge number of explosions, enemies and vehicles on screen. Cutscenes look solid, benefiting from above average animation, though this clearly does not extend to gameplay. The sound is a hodgepodge of forgettable voice work, potent gunfire, and booming detonations, and music which is often drowned out by the aforementioned. It's hardly all a technical showcase for the console, but considering how many games of this era struggled with performance and smooth shooting, bar perhaps Call of Duty, Frontlines still stands above a fair bit of the competition. And this extends to the game as a whole. Frontline's Fuel of War won't displace any of the Xbox 360's most quintessential shooters, and it very clearly wears its influences on its sleeve. However, Chaos have crafted a shooter of prodigious scale, which is mechanically smooth and has some unique weaponry that lets you create your own fun it could have perhaps benefited from a few more noteworthy story beats and set pieces during its campaign. But online proves more memorable for its sheer size, even if it's reduced now due to the closure of dedicated servers. Shooting fans looking for a more competent break from the norm would do well to try this out. Russia's getting desperate, reckless. Who knows what they're capable of? So how far you think this thing's gonna go? At the rate we're going, it's either Washington or Moscow. 